Welcome everyone to this month's edition of the One Up Effect Live Meetup. I'm Thomas Edwards, also known as Coach Thomas, and I'm here every month to be of service, um, to be of service to you and to help guide you in any area of your life where you feel particularly challenged and to invite you to use the lens of playfulness as a potential solution for overcoming your life's challenges. Every month I come in and I have either no idea or somewhat enough idea of how I wanna structure things. And the more that I'm doing this, uh, the more I always feel called to bring in uh, a lesson from my life and offer opportunities for reflection and uh, for me to also be available to coach if you have any questions. But I also want to build community. I want you guys to be able to connect and get to know one another and to know that this is always a safe place to practice whatever it is that you're looking to become better at, you know, and uh, for those of you who are watching this and may not know who I am, I've been a coach for over 13 years. I originally started in the dating and relationship space. I was known as the professional wingman, and I created a very successful business helping men and women all around the world learn how to find themselves in a long-term lasting relationship with an amazing, compatible, attractive person. And uh, hundreds of marriages, uh, almost you know, over a thousand relationships later, engagements, kids, you name it, uh, I found myself on top of the world at a very, very young age. I mean, I started this, that company when I was 22. And a few years in, um, I reached a, a real level of success. Um, I was definitely highlighted by being flown into Chicago to be on the Steve Harvey show. And I crushed that segment. And I remember celebrating on the rooftop and looking at Around, I was actually looking around uh, basically the city of Chicago, uh, a city that I had never been before prior to that, surrounded by people that I knew or I didn't know, but clearly knew me and loved me. And I was looking and I saw myself in the reflection of the window and of the, the table that I was getting bottle service. And I was like, yeah, I have everything. I have it all, right? The money, the status, the, the social influence, the, at a, I met my wife, I mean, I'm riding on cloud nine, but I didn't feel that way internally. In fact, I felt the complete opposite. I felt empty and, and unfulfilled. And I didn't expect to feel that way. And when I did, it really took my life um, in so many ways uh, through depression, uncertainty. I felt lost. I felt alone. Um, I went into drugs and alcohol abuse, and I was just slowly deteriorating everything that was meaningful in my life. And I was holding all this in. I, I didn't know how to manage my feelings. I didn't know how to cope properly. I didn't know who to talk to about these things. I mean, I felt like as a human being, and particularly for me as a Black man growing up, that like, we don't talk about those things. That's a sign of weakness. We don't, feelings, uh, we don't deal with that, you know? And those very, those feelings that I had were the very things that almost took my life. And, uh, Eventually, you had to have a come to Jesus moment with myself, so to speak, and realize that I actually need support. And I went out and saw all kinds of support. And it made me realize the true power of having people in your life who can support you to getting to the next level. I mean, how could I possibly not realize this as a coach? Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> uh, and it created a lot of amazing things in my life through recovery and being sober, through spiritual connections, through uh, therapy, psychiatry. Uh, I was working with a life coach. I mean, it was so amazing. But one thing was still missing in my life, and that was I wasn't having fun. I was just fulfilling all the obligations that I created for myself, and I wasn't enjoying it. So I made a point to really explore what it looked like to have fun in my life. And that's when it, I reconnected with my first true passion, which was video games. And video games for me was never an outlet to escape. It was a place I could go to for my greatest creativity, my expression, connection, wonder, curiosity, innovation. It gave me energy, hope, excitement, happiness, pure joy. And when I realized that that was something that I had removed from my life for the better part of a decade, I knew that I needed to find a way to keep it in my life. And so after a brief stint as a uh, semi-professional esports 
gamer uh, and, and entering my, my first tournament and doing reasonably well in that. I walked away realizing, man, if I just made my entire life like this, life would be amazing. And that's when it clicked with me. What if I just made my life a game? And I took my academic knowledge of game design and, and production, which I originally went to school for, and put it with my 13 plus years of coaching experience. And I created this one of a kind experience called the one up effect, where it really begs the question, what would you do if you found an extra life? How would you live? You know, what would you end up doing? And it's a pretty interesting effect. I mean, you could look up studies, but something does psychologically happen. And I believe even psychically happen when you get your first green mushroom, which is representative of the one up in Super Mario Brothers. And that is you're going from, you know, this place of scarcity and survival, not, you know, not wanting to die to all of a sudden now realizing you have this extra life to live and to explore and to face challenges and to take risks, knowing that if things don't work out, you have feedback and it's a game. You wanna play again because you want to win. That experience of fulfillment of not just winning, but having learned the lesson that got you to win. That is what fulfillment is. It's all about not necessarily the accomplishment. The accomplishment is just a byproduct of playing the game. But how we seek fulfillment is that we were able to learn something, to grow as a person, and to be able to apply it to our lives in such a way that it makes it better. And I believe that we are here on this earth purely to enjoy the experience of maximizing our potential. That is what the one-up effect is about. And I wanted to just, first of all, welcome you for being here, taking the time out of your day. I mean, this is lunchtime for me, and I know for some of you, this might be later in the afternoon or where you are, part of the world. So I just wanna thank you for taking the time to come out here. I'm gonna share a quick little agenda. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a, a, something that came up for me earlier today, this morning. And after that, we're going to have a little bit of a conversation, those who want to talk about it in the chat, which they possibly can, or if they want to come on and unmute themselves and, and come on, you can do that too. And after that, um, I'm going to share an opportunity for you to, to continue to work with me if you decide to do so. And then after that, I'm going to continue to coach and be here for you guys for the next 50 minutes. So um, to start things off, you know, I've been, I just started a new uh, workout program particularly just using uh, free weights. And it's the first time that I've been using free weights in over two years. And before that, it was the first time I was using free weights in almost four. So <laughs> while you may not think that I, you know, I don't work out, and I do, I just did it in different ways. I would run, I'd walk, I would do some, some body weight uh, training, but nothing structured like this. And I just started last week. And from the moment I started pushing weights, I, I felt my body transform just that instantly. And it's been a week and a half. My wife uh, has particularly noticed that I, I look different. <laughs> um, and so that excites her. It excites me to see that I feel transformed. But more importantly for me, I didn't do this because I wanted the aesthetic appearance. I actually was even, I actually didn't even consider that there would be an aesthetic transformation in me in doing this. I actually just wanted, that I wanted to feed this calling that I had internally, that my body needed to continue to be optimized as my life levels up. As I take on more responsibility in my, lives, in my life and I continue to try to pursue great accomplishments and achievements in my life, I know that my body needs to be the pillar that allows me to, to get that done. If I have a weak body that doesn't have enough energy that um, is not sustainable in its energy, that is fragile. When challenges come my way, which is inevitable, I'm not going to be able to have the body to withstand those things, you know? And I just always had this calling. I didn't know what to do. So that's why I started running. And that's why I started walking and finding different ways to, to do a stretching. But really what I, was happening was I was avoiding the real thing, which was I need to get my pump. <laughs> I need to go to the gym and get my pump and let my body really activate to really get out that aggression, that emotion and, and, and fuel myself um, with primal movements in, in a lot of ways. And 
it got me thinking about this idea of the double life. And for me personally, this double life comes up often when I think about my my experience in the dark and you know abusing drugs and alcohol and how I was living that life and then trying to maintain appearances as a public figure and and also trying to maintain keep my shit together with my family it didn't work right <laughs> uh, it, it just didn't work it was not sustainable but then it got me thinking recently about this whole idea of work life balance right like first of all i don't know who created this right and and i'll do the research to find that out but there's so many things that I believe is wrong with that phrase. So many things, right? And so I want to break it down and really have you think about this question of, have you been leading a double life and not realizing that that's what you've been doing? So the, I want to first think about the last word in that phrase, balance. When I think about balance, I think about a moment of time in time when you're able to hold things and balance them where nothing is moving. That is a moment of balance. Now, when I think about how that happens in life, it may exist a handful of times in our lifetimes <laughs> where we're able to actually hold everything and not move, not worry, feel a sense of freedom and being able to maintain everything. But if you're here or if you're watching, like you and I both, you all, you and I both know that that's not how life works. We're typically not balancing things, we're constantly juggling things. You know, whether we are working, whether we're parents, um, whether we care about our personal well-being, whether it's physically, mentally, or, or spiritually, we have a social life that we want to maintain. We need to also take care of ourselves and, and connect with ourselves, connect with our partner, should we have one, or even pursue one. And then there's also other things that we want to pursue, like our hobbies, our interests, our passions, things that we enjoy that make us laugh and, and smile and, and feel connected to life. How do we, we can't hold all those things at one time. We can only do one thing at a time. And so this idea that balance is a thing, is, it's, it's a lie. It does not exist. Balance does not exist. And then I also want to talk about the idea of work life. This is where I believe the double life comes into play because I feel like the idea of work life is a little lopsided. <laughs> you know, work is very singular, right? You are working. That's, that's a very specific thing that you're doing. If you're working is usually because you're doing it to make a living. You do enjoy you doing it, but it's because you're, you're creating money. You're creating a, a way to support yourself and your family. But life is not that singular. Life is your kids, your marriage or your relationship or your pursuit of one, your physical health, your mental health, your spiritual connection to faith, your hobbies, your interests, all these things that I said before. So this idea that work-life balance, it just doesn't make sense because work is very one-dimensional, and life is very multidimensional. And to just put life as just the one word that encompasses all of that is unfair. <laughs> and it makes you seem like because you can't achieve work-life balance, you're failing. Based on that, you know, the way it's phrased, of course you're failing because it actually does not exist. It is not a realistic path. So what is, like, what is the solution? Well, one way you can look at it is uh, one way that I personally like to look at it, which is work-life synergy, where everything you do is made up of, is, is a part of a bigger picture. And that still doesn't really take care of the, the work-life, right? Because we just identified that work is one-dimensional and life is multi-dimensional. So I figured, well, what could we do if we just have this idea that work is not meant to be separate from our lives. Imagine if work is just a part of your life, then you don't necessarily need to feel like you're trying to balance these two lives of work and then the rest of your life. <laughs> what if it was just life? And 
if synergy tends to be kind of a, an outstanding word, maybe it, it's not something that necessarily you can comprehend or maybe doesn't fit, perhaps harmony could be the better word to use. So now we're looking at a place of life harmony where you are in a rhythm of juggling and, and maintaining equilibrium in some type of way with all the things you have going on in your life, which includes your physical, mental, spiritual wellness, the people that bring you joy, the places you like to go to, and the experiences you like to have that bring you joy, your connection to self, connection to your partner, your children, your ability to expand your reach and your empathy and compassion for other people, particularly those you don't know. And how do you increase yourself, your value as an asset to the world? And how do you share that value? And then how do you ask for value in return? This is all about your life. It's not separate. We tend to make things easier when we compartmentalize things. And, and I do agree that organization and structure is very important, particularly external organization and structure. But we can sometimes get too much into it and we separate ourselves in such a way where it then becomes unmanageable. So if we just really focused on seeing not work and life as separate, creating two different lives, two different experiences of how we experience life, and we just made it all encompassing about life, it might give us an opportunity to see that everything has an opportunity to be in harmony. And it's just about finding that rhythm that works for you, that can allow you to have fulfillment, to experience the fulfillment. Remember what I talked about, right? Fulfillment is that experience where what you are learning is allowing you to grow in such a way that is bettering your life and you're experiencing that bettering. That is the fulfillment. It's not always about the outcome. The outcome just becomes a byproduct of who you are becoming. And that is the fulfillment. And so seeing that all come together I feel like could make things a little bit simpler for you when it comes to this idea of work-life balance because it just doesn't exist. And while it's a very, very well-searched phrase on Google and there's tons of articles that's trying to teach you how to achieve work-life balance. And I even put up videos on how to achieve work-life balance. The truth is that actually doesn't exist. It's really just about harmonizing your life and doing it in a way that is fun and enjoyable and it, it perpetuates your growth. And hopefully, <laughs> you know, if there's an opportunity where we, you and I can work together, I can show you how to be able to do such a thing and have an external structure that supports you in living that, that way. So you don't have to feel like you're living a double life of work and life. It's just life and you get to live it and have fun. So um, and so before I go into the coaching, I'm actually just going to jump into, uh, can I just reference it if you and I work together? One of the things I love to do, and one of my signature programs is called The Quest. The Quest is a three-month experience that allows you to understand how to create a life that is fun and enjoyable and productive and successful. It really helps challenge this idea that success is the key to happiness. In fact, we flip it around. We focus on happiness being the gateway to your success. And the idea is this quest is to teach you that both happiness and success can coexist without sacrificing one or the other. And it's broken down into daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly actions that you can track so you can actually witness and see your development over time as you pertains to the things that you wanna experience in the various areas of your life. You'd be coached by me inside of an amazing group and we'd be starting on August 1st, which is a really fun time. I like starting at the beginning of the month as a way to just get a fresh start. And so if that's something that you're interested in, I would love to have a conversation with you one-on-one. -on -one. Just go to thomasedwardsjr.com slash apply. And you can schedule a time with me and fill out an application. And then you and I will hop on and see where you would like your life to be in 90 days. And if you haven't um, watched the previous live meetup that I did, I will give you a little bit of a logical 
uh, foreshadowing, if you will, of what where your life could be in 90 days. And so I, I love numbers. It's fun. Some of you guys who've already been here may have heard this before, but I love this idea of where you trying to be 1% better can get you. We, I feel like we, we diminish the value of 1%. <laughs> it seems so insignificant because we want big transformation and we want it now in a world of instant gratification. However, if we're thinking about a lifetime worth of value, I imagine it's gonna be something that you're gonna to want to experience and hold on to forever. So if you were to take you know, one and put that to the power of 90, which is 90 days, right? So if you were to choose, I'm not gonna change, or I'm gonna go for crazy transformation and somehow you feel like you come up short. So you don't feel like you've gotten better. You've just stayed the same for 90 days. Well, one to the power of 90 is one, right? One to the power of anything is always going to be one. However, if you try to be 1% better and you feel that you effectively have been able to do that, then 1.01 .01 to the power of 90 is 2.4, which means that you have an opportunity to 2.4 X your life. In a world where we hear 10 X or 100 X and things like that, 2.4 sounds pretty realistic. And by the way, it's transformational. You could actually be unrecognizable in 90 days if you commit to that daily action of becoming 1% better. And in a year, 1.01 .01 to the power of 365 is 37. 37 sounds ridiculous now, right? <laughs> but I can tell you from personal experience and through clients' experiences, your life can transform in that way in a year. I can tell you that my life does not look anything like it did a year ago and certainly did not look anything like it did two years ago. And it's unrecognizable. Like I am not even the same, like I'm a completely different person. Who was that guy three years ago? You know, and you can have that experience too. So if you want to go to thomasedgerjr.com slash apply, and I'll be happy to connect with you. And I look forward to hearing from you. With that said, I would love to hear uh, what people have to say, any thoughts that are feelings that come up for them as I've talked about, you know, this idea of the double life and the truth behind work-life balance and any insights or feedback that they like to share. Feel free to comment, hop in, discuss. I think it's just refreshing to hear the 1% because mm. it's doable. It's, yeah. it's, it's everything that you just said. It doesn't feel like it's something that's so you know, hard to achieve. So. Yeah, I really appreciated that. Yeah. I mean, 1% can be seen in, in so many different ways. I mean, I, I've i said before, you know, 1% of your day is 15 minutes, you know? And so uh, I remember seeing someone had posted on Facebook, all these things that you could do to just change your life if you were to do it every day. Things like read a paragraph of a book or even write a paragraph of your book and to drink a glass of water to go on a, a walk around the block, to text a friend, like all these things. And my simple comment was, you could probably do all of that in 15 minutes. <laughs> it doesn't actually take a lot of time. And when you can simplify things that much, it becomes something that you can commit to. You know, And I do believe that we still have the capacity of creating habits in, in 21 days. It's just that our ability to sustain those habits have become a lot more challenging due to the world that we live in that is filled with distractions. And so it's not enough to make things your habit anymore. It needs to be a part of your internal culture. You know, and how you get there is by repetitive habits become a part of your character. They become a part of, of, of just what you're developing. And then eventually it gets to a point where it becomes a part of your personality. And when it gets becomes a part of your personality, when you're part of your personality, that means other people see you as that person, <laughs> right? Character is more about how you see yourself. But the personality now becomes more of the external byproduct of what people are seeing in you. And then it becomes a part of your culture. And the great thing about culture is that people like culture. People want to be a part of culture, you know? And the way culture is created is through leadership. And so that is the process. And, and typically what I've seen is it takes a year 
of that daily practice for it to become a part of your internal internal culture and for people to not just see that as a part of you but to want to also have that a part of them as well you know so it goes and the way i i, I saw that is that it has to part of life is also extending beyond yourself right being able to have an impact beyond just what's happening with you and so that's when it gets to that that level you don't have to worry about that if you're just starting out but i do want to show that there is that potential where even just doing something every day for yourself for 15 minutes that's one percent of your day with the effort to be one percent better a year from now could have an impact on so many people without you having to do anything but the very thing that you've been doing every day it's possible i wouldn't be here <laughs> if, if that weren't true you know it took a while for me to embody the methodology of the one-up effect it took years and to get to a point where my results speak for themselves and how i'm showing up you know if i if i did not embody if i didn't do the daily work my life would look very different i'd probably be divorced I'd probably be fighting for custody. I could still be drinking. I would probably not have a business. My body would be falling apart. I'd have no spiritual grounding. I would have very small friends or friends that, uh, you know, wouldn't have the best interests for me. You know, I would not be accepting and loving of myself. And the list could just go on and on and on. And by the way, I was there at that place where all those things could have been a reality. And so to be where I'm at today is not only just a miracle, but there was a little bit of willingness on my part to put in the daily, the daily effort to show up, you know? So in the case of my wife, like I had to, I told her <laughs> that I'm going to win her back every single day. And she like scoffed at it because I couldn't blame her. She couldn't stand me at the time, you know? And now we're in an amazing place, still healing and still growing and, and, and still working together, but we're doing it together, you know? And she probably would say that I did win her, I win her, win her back. <laughs> and the great thing is it doesn't stop. I got to keep, keep reminding her how awesome I am <laughs> for her to want to stay with me, you know? And that's okay. I'd want her to do the same thing for me too. So it's really about that daily work. So yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Doug, Lucian, any, any thoughts, words, comments? You can also put in the, the chat if you don't want to speak. Oh, no, it's fine. No, it's, um, it's always good to get the reinforcement of making change. Yeah. And like I said, the change doesn't need to be significant, you know, um, when, when we, when I sit with my clients and I, I do the class with them and they map out what their next 90 days are going to look like and what they're committed to, there's, there's some things that we, we talk about. The first thing we talk about is like, who, who is it that they want to become as a result, you know, in, at the end of 90 days, what is it that they want to feel and who, you know, what is the thing that that person experiences, right? So for me, when I do my quest, I think about, well, who, you know, who do I wanna be 90 days from now? And what does he experience in 90 days that I can't experience today? So the quest is completely designed to lead you in a direction that you've never gone before. So by the end of 90 days, you've done things you've never done before. Um, that warning is there. Um, if anyone's willing to volunteer, and I'll take a pause, could they um, log, like bounce out and come back in? Because when they do that, it'll create unlimited minutes for my account. I'll do it. Okay, thanks, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when we do that quest, we, we think about, okay, who do I want to be in 90 days? And what do I experience in those 90 days that I haven't, I'm not capable of experiencing now? And once I'm there, then I start to think about, okay, well, what does 90 days version, right? The, the future version of me do today that starts that process of getting in there? Because clearly future me made a choice to do something that is different than what I'm doing today. 
So a great example, and, and this is not a part of my quest. This is an indirect result of another quest that I'm on, right? So I'm doing this uh, muscle mastery uh, you know, program. And it was because I, I wanted something structured to put myself in the gym. And that's a part of my quest, just to complete that. You know, and it's because I wanted to feel more powerful. I wanted to feel more energetic. I wanted to feel, uh, my, I want to feel optimized in my body that can, you know, handle my ascension in, in life, both externally and internally. And a by, like a, like a side effect of this has been for me working out in the morning and getting my pump and then coming back, I have not had any coffee except for one day. Now this is from going from having coffee every single day <laughs> for as long as I can remember. And I didn't realize that there was, there was a part of me that could exist where the desire to have coffee or to make it a part of my routine didn't exist. That wasn't there. I just figured it's a part of my routine. So it's just, almost automated programming, if you will. And now like it doesn't, it actually, my body tells me it doesn't make sense for me to have coffee because I already have all this energy, <laughs> you know? And, and my wife sees it. Like I'm, I mean, I get up at 6 a.m. and I'm, you know, in the gym by seven, I come back at eight and it looks like I'm, you know, on the ceiling, <laughs> my, you know? And it's because I'm just excited and enthusiastic and just really pumped, but Clearly something is happening with me physically that's tapping into uh, greater energy that I don't need to seek external sources from. You know, I seek, you know, seek from external sources like coffee. And, uh, it, and because that's happening, it's causing me now to, you know, rethink, oh, like what else is happening with me now that this is happening? Well, one thing I'm noticing is I'm drinking a lot more water. Last quest, I had a goal of drinking 90 ounces of water a day. And I can pull it up in my notes here. Let me see if I can pull it up here. I probably did something around uh, just because I want to be honest and make sure it's clear here. Yeah, it is 65 out of 90 days. It is 65%. So that came to around 56 out of the possible 86 days. I started my quest July 1st. I've had, I've drank, this is not a part of my quest, by the way. I'm not, this is drinking water, 90, 90 ounces of water is not a part of my current quest. It was the previous one. However, I've had over 90 ounces of water, 12 out of the 14 days. So, it's really interesting because, you know, you six, you know, three months ago, now going on, you know, three and a half, I had this idea that, you know, I wanted to drink more water. And while 65% is still pretty good, I mean, I wasn't doing that at all before. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. Now, without even thinking about it, I'm doing it, what is it, 85, almost 90% of the time. <laughs> you know, this is, this is kind of the subsequent results of what happens when you allow yourself to go on a quest to do something you've never done. People usually think that they need to have it happen right away. That's not really how our personal development and transformation works. When we choose to do something that we haven't done before, it forces us to face something we've never faced before or we haven't been wanting to face. And we probably might be spending more of our time facing that thing than actually doing the action. But when we actually face that thing or create a different experiences that forces us to face that thing from a different perspective, then the thing that we actually want to experience comes easy and naturally to the point where we don't even think about it. Like I'm already halfway through my second bottle, which is 32 ounces. So, and it's 1230 my time. So I'll easily eclipse 90 ounces before dinner, you know? And I didn't even have to think about it. I drink, and because I'm working out, I'm drinking at least 32 ounces before I'm even done with my workout at 8, 8 a.m., you know? So it's when you are able to have some structure that can allow you to navigate these things, as opposed to kind of just freeballing it or winging it, <laughs> no pun intended there, <laughs> um, you're able to 
really see and witness and track your transformation over time and be able to see three months from now, six months from now, nine, 12, two, year, two years from now, all these transformations you've made just by committing your, to yourself to doing it. You know, and it starts with that little action. All it took was for me to start drinking water <laughs> three months ago, you know, just to say, hey, I'm just going to drink more water. Hey, I'm just going to go to the gym. It's not easy. I'm not saying this is easy. None of this is meant to be easy, you know, or else we would have done it already. But when we start to do it and we commit to at least showing up, that little bit of willingness of just showing up and, and trying to complete the action, something in here changes and something in here changes and the connection that takes place allows us to see the, the world and your experience of life in a very different perspective. This is where the curiosity and the wonder and the creativity and the innovation starts to emerge back into your life because you're choosing to play a different game that you otherwise, that you weren't playing before. And by taking that approach to anything in your life, it just changes the game, <laughs> you know, and it allows you to experience it in a different way that can produce results, but also allow you to enjoy it from the place of, like I said, curiosity, playfulness, wonder, creativity. And then you get to end up over time creating your own game of life. And that's why I wanted to create the one-up effect anyways. I wanted to give people an opportunity to create their own game of life and not try to win someone else's game of life. When you were talking about exercising. It's interesting because this isn't necessarily about me. This is when you, my husband, who I've been with for a long time, but I did not realize until more recently, more recently being within the last year or two, he has always been so good at it. Like I would say good, but it's, it's within the routine. Mm -hmm. Wake up at three in the morning, do his morning routines, exercise, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I don't like exercising. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> All of these years, I've always thought that you enjoy it. I mean, you wake up, you make it, you're so diligent. You're so like, it is your routine. It's like, I don't like it. I just like how I feel. Yeah. When afterwards, and it's and it's just that kind of blew my mind. I was just like, <laughs> first of all, I've known you all this time, and I never knew that. Um, it hasn't sunk in with me. Yet, yeah. <laughs> which is which is uh, being transparent. Um, but uh, I just that was just a new thought. But I just wanted to share that it doesn't have to be about that aspect of this is just something that I love, and I, I'm getting there with that yeah part of the routine that's that's so key hollis like i didn't go in to the gym like with this idea that like i'm excited about it or i'm like gonna have fun doing it like it actually sucks when i'm in it <laughs> it absolutely sucks you know but right after i'm done i feel absolutely amazing and um, Doug, you and I had talked about this, you know, in the outdoors community, they actually refer this, to, they refer to this as type two fun. So there's three types of fun. Type one is you're having fun, you know, the idea of it's fun, you're having fun during, and then you feel good about it after, right? Type two is the idea of it doesn't sound that great. The activity itself does not sound great, but at the end, you feel good about it. And type three is like, why did I do this? this? This didn't even actually sound fun at the beginning. This was miserable during, and I feel really crappy now, right? Like, and so, <laughs> and so the idea is to have a good mix of both type one and type two activities, because we need both short-term and long-term dopamine in our, in our uh, experience of life. We need the short-term of this is fun and I'm having fun. And this makes me feel good, right? And, and some of that could be involved with instant gratification. You're allowed to have that from time to time, right? And then there's the long-term dopamine, which is, while it's not fun to actually do this in the moment, I know that this will actually be really good for me in the long-term and I will feel great about it long-term, 
you know? And there's a little in between between type one and type two, which is if you can find ways to have fun doing something that you otherwise wouldn't have fun doing, that gives you a huge advantage of being able to maximize the experience. Because when you're having fun, you go all out. You're super focused, your energy increases, you, you get in flow, right? And you get into the zone where you're just running on all cylinders, you lose consciousness and you're just in your magic. And so if you can find ways to you know, make things more fun that otherwise would not be fun, that gives you a huge advantage to have more access to that energy. Because here's the truth, things that you don't enjoy doing takes more energy, right? Things that you love to do does not take a lot of energy, right? So how do you balance that? Well, you find ways to enjoy the things that you don't enjoy doing so it relieves you of some of that energy. You're not gonna be leaking as much energy as before. So it could just be um, a playlist that you just fire up, you know? Maybe it's going to the gym with your husband, right? Doing it together, you know? It could be even rewarding yourself with something after completing the activity. If that's something that you need to kind of start off and get that going, you're totally able to do that. The idea is to not rely on that and you can eventually wean off, but that is something that could also get you started as well. I mean, washing dishes for me is fun now because <laughs> I, I could pop on a playlist and, and do it, you know? And when my, and I've noticed this also with my daughter, when my daughter wants to do something that she doesn't want to do, or she, let me rephrase this. When my daughter has to do something she doesn't want to do, <laughs> her go-to is asking me if, if she can play music. And I'm like, yeah. And when she plays music, she can dance and do all the things that she wants to do. And she still does that activity, you know? And so it's important that with the resources that we have, we can use them to make the experiences a little bit lighter, not because, and not feel guilty about it, right? <laughs> That's also the big thing too. You, you, you want to make parts of your life that aren't fun, fun, or else it's unlikely that you're going to keep doing them. You know, so to find that middle ground is so, so key. So I'm glad he shared with you that he does not like to work out, you know, and it's, it kind of messes with you a little bit, actually, right? When you see like, wow, he's getting up every single day at the crack of dawn to do something he doesn't want to do. And he does this every single day without a beat. Like, it's more than just I mean, at that point, it's just discipline and repetition, right? Like he's just disciplined and it's part of his routine. But when it gets to that point, I don't think he's thinking about the fact of whether or not it's fun or not fun. He's just doing it because it's a part of his internal culture. That's really what it is, you know? And until he decides to change that, that's just going to be what he does, you know? <laughs> yeah. For those of you who are coming up a little bit here, I just wanted to welcome you. I'm Thomas Edwards, creator and author of The Wump Effect. We were talking about earlier today, uh, this idea of the double life and, this, and also the concept or the misperception of work-life balance. And so, you know, my belief is that that doesn't exist. You can't just balance work and life. That's just a suspended moment in time that you may experience a few times in your life. But reality is everything's fluid, everything's constantly moving. But even on the topic of work and life, right? Work is one dimensional, like it's only work. But life is much more than just life, right? It's multi-dimensional. We're talking about your physical wellness, your spiritual wellness, your mental wellness, your friends, things that you do and enjoy doing, your partner, or your pursuit of one, your children, love of yourself, community, right? And then there's also work. And so I presented this idea of not thinking of work-life balance because that actually doesn't exist. Any article you read that tries to tell you how to do it is actually just inaccurate <laughs> because it just doesn't exist. What could exist is this idea of life harmony where your life, work is a part of your life. It's not separate. When you separate the two, now you're living this double life where you feel like you need to do, you know, show up one way in your work and then show up another way in your life. 
it takes a lot of energy to live a double life. I can tell you from experience when I was in my darkness, that's what I was doing. And it just, it, it didn't work. It became, you know, unsustain, you know, unsustainable. So when you're able to see everything as part of your life and realizing that everything is in harmony, the idea is to get into a place of harmony where you're getting in a place of flow where things are juggling and, and it's happening and you're in a rhythm. That's what allows you to, to maximize. And so Marty has a great question. Let me pop it up here. Um, can you give some practical examples of how to make something fun? Yeah, this is a great, this is a great question. So I was talking about originally, you know, when I was washing dishes or doing any type of cleaning, I did not, I do not enjoy cleaning. And a lot, it has to do with a lot of things. Like I grew up not having to clean. I was very blessed with a mom who was very diligent about that. Um, even though I learned how to do those things myself, I didn't have to. So when I was out on my own, I always did what I could to make sure that there wasn't a mess. I didn't have to be left with the mess. Now I'm married, I have a kid, messes are unavoidable. In fact, it just seems like it's a part of our everyday experience. And it used to drive me nuts to like walk down and go walk into a room, see clutter everywhere and just lose it. <laughs> it just gave, it gave me a lot of anxiety and then I would express this anxiety not productively to my wife and my daughter. And it just, it became this really bad cycle. So I made a point to understand, well, what is it about this that I don't like? Is it the fact that like there aren't systems in place? Is it because I'm not doing anything about it? And I realized it's because I'm not enjoying the fact that I have to clean up. Even if I'm cleaning after, cleaning up after them, yes, I cannot enjoy that too, but it's really just the fact that I have to clean up. So realize, so the first part I had to accept that this is a part of my life. Like I have to accept that there will be clutter. So that was a big thing I had to overcome. <laughs> now, once I was able to get to that place of acceptance, now I was like, all right, well, how do I create opportunities to enjoy the experience? Well, the example that I gave earlier today was playing music. So I actually have music that I play for different activities that I do in my life. I have a workout playlist. I have a life playlist that I'll play in the car if I'm not playing an audiobook. I have a cleaning or organizing playlist <laughs> that I play that gets me into more of a game-like state where I'm playing. And literally what this playlist is, is just like music from video games, both old school and current video games. But what that does is it gets me into a state where I'm actually able to see and problem solve and create solutions for organization, decluttering, and cleaning. And because I'm getting into that state, for me, it's a little bit more enjoyable. Now, I do have fun. I've now gotten to a place where I do have fun, but it took a long time for me to get to that place. It, at first, it started off with, you know, this sucks. Like, I don't really want to do this, but I know I have to, so I'm going to do it. Then it got to, this is tolerable. <laughs> I can tolerate this, but I probably wouldn't want to do this all the time. Now, because I got into a place of acceptance that this is just a part of my life, now it's like, okay, like, this actually can be enjoyable. And then it was, now it's gone to a place where I might not say look forward to it, but when the opportunity is there, you know, because I accepted it, I now know how I can enjoy that experience and let the time go by. And what I've also noticed is when I'm able to enjoy the experience, I become much more efficient with my energy and how I use it. I'm able to create much better solutions when it comes to organizing and decluttering. And when I'm done, I'm not resentful. <laughs> I feel accomplished and I'm able to carry that, that enthusiasm and those positive vibes back to my family, you know? And so that's one example, right? So what you, can you do during the experience that can be more fun, right? Maybe it's doing push-ups right before the activity that you want to do just to get your blood pumping and release a little bit of that dopamine and serotonin. Maybe it is playing a certain type of music. It could be also giving yourself a reward. Maybe it's after I declutter this mess, I'm gonna give myself 15 minutes to read my favorite book or the book that I'm reading or to listen to an audio book. Maybe it's, I'm gonna treat myself to an ice cream bar or whatever. Like it's okay to have these external rewards in place as long as we don't depend on them. Once we start to depend on them, then it's not about the experience, it's about the reward. And we wanna move away from that, from 
that being the way we live our lives, you know, because when we think about work, that's really the epitome of what that game is about. It's like, I work and I get money or I work and I work enough, then I get a promotion, right? And it's like, it's, and businesses know this, right? They've created the entire structure and the system and the game based on, okay, you're gonna do this and we're gonna dangle this reward in front of you so you can keep doing what we want you to do, right? So you don't wanna create that in your life, but if you need it to get started so you can start to experience things differently, it's a great way to start doing it. And it's a little bit of an external motivation to push you over the, the edge. But like I said, external motivation diminishes the longer you do something. And so it's very important that you increase the internal motivation, the intrinsic motivation by implementing things during the experience that can allow you to enjoy it more. Totally that answered your, your, your question, Marty, but that is a great question to ask. You know, so hopefully that was a great example. But if you also have another question or follow-up, feel free to ask. Any thoughts, questions? comments, even if you're just coming in and you want to know something or ask something, you're free to do so as well. All right. Well, in that case, uh, the last thing I, I will share and kind of just, oh yeah, you can ask Marty, no worries. <laughs> um, ask away, bro. Grab a sip of water here. And while Marty is going to ask his, his question, my uh, challenge for you guys, your, your mini game for today, is to think about one thing in your life that you do pretty regularly that you don't enjoy. <laughs> and think of one thing you can do to make it a little bit more enjoyable. What can you create out of the experience, whether it's during or after, that can make that experience a little bit more easeful for you? And when you get a chance, excuse me, you can comment actually by being a part of my community. You can go to thomasedwardsjr.com slash community. You can join the game of life and you can post your comments or your thoughts and you know the results of this little mini game for you inside there. Um, let's see. Oh, Mark, yeah. So can you briefly tell us about the first part of the session that I was not able to attend? So I actually did sum it up for you very quickly and, and this will be a great way for me to cap off because that's exactly how I was going to do it. Was, you know, I was working out this morning and I just realized, wow, like, I'm so grateful for being able to work out now because I feel like I've tapped into another part of myself externally and internally that's giving me the better lack of words, like better life force for me to continue to go after my, you know, the things I want in my life. And it triggered this thought of the double life, you know, and how, you know, back in the day when I was experiencing my darkness and drug and alcohol abuse, that was very my life. It was that and then trying to maintain everything else in my life. And it just wasn't sustainable. So now, you know, far removed from that, I still start to think about, I started to think about this idea of, well, how does a double life still exist in, in my world or other people's worlds? And it immediately came to the idea of work-life balance. This is a, a phrase that is thrown around like confetti because we all want to achieve it. Whoever created this, created this amazing thing that we all want to experience. And I'm, this is my position, you don't have to agree with it, but my position is that actually does not exist. Work-life balance is a lie. And the reason why is balance does not really exist in life. It's all about, because when you think about balance, it's a singular moment in time where you're able to hold all things and not move. But that's not how life works. Everything is fluid and constantly moving. And if you're moving, you might be balancing but you're not necessarily experiencing balance. And then the idea of work life, how work is very one dimensional, right? You're just working. There's no other aspect to work other than work. And then there's life, which is multi-dimensional. There's so many aspects to life. Your physical, mental, spiritual health, your, your wellness, you know, your social life, your romantic relationship or your pursuit of one, your children, should you have any, 
you know, your, uh, and, and work is a part of that, right? But also your passion, your interests, your hobbies. Life is very multidimensional, work is not. So the idea of trying to separate the two and trying to create balance is actually not realistic. If you were to put this on a balance scale, life weighs a lot more than our work because we're, it's so many things. Yet we put, or, or we're kind of inclined or kind of steered towards putting all of our effort into our work. And so the idea is, you know, if we were to accept that work-life balance doesn't exist, what could exist? Well, if the first part is if work was just a part of your life, then you wouldn't feel this need to live a double life where you're putting your energy in one area and then showing up and putting your energy in another area. Maybe you're putting a lot of energy in your work and not showing up in your life, right? That's not balance. But if you were to put it all together, maybe you might be able to see a way where you can actually do, do all those things, right? And then instead of thinking of balance, maybe think of harmony, where you find yourself in a rhythm where you are in a way juggling all these aspects of your life, right? Your physical health, your mental health, your spiritual health, the people that bring you joy in your life, your social circle, the places you like to go to, the experiences that you enjoy, your passions, interests, your hobbies, expressing and demonstrating love of yourself, spending time with your partner and your children or pursuit of a partner, if that's your position, you know, showing compassion for strangers in your community, your immediate community in the world. And how do you increase your value as an asset to your work? You know, and how do you share that value and how do you ask for value in return, right? Like these are all parts of your life. These are areas where we seek great fulfillment. And how do we harmonize it, right? How do we get into a rhythm? That is what I believe is, is what most of us are looking for. It's that, that harmony where we're able to do all these things and experience growth in all of these things. But how do you do it in a way that is manageable and sustainable? We want to do this because I believe that that's what our purpose is is to maximize our existence, right? And have an impact with that. But I also believe that we should be able to enjoy that experience as well. So how do we enjoy that experience? So the topic was really just about that kind of bringing the idea of, do you feel like you maybe have lived, may have been living a double life without even notice it, noticing it, not even being conscious of it? And what are you gonna do to bring more harmony into your life? Yeah. And and that was really the topic of today. So uh, we're at the top of the hour. Um, and so I'm going to wrap up. Does anyone have any final thoughts or comments or words they to share before we sign off? All right. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for showing up and being here. For those who are watching this or watching the recording, thank you so much for spending your time. I hope you got a lot out of this. If you want to go deeper and if you want to connect with me and be a part of our quest that's starting August 1st, you can go to thomasedwardsjr.com slash apply and you can get a conversation with me. We'll figure out if the quest is a right fit for you or any other additional support may be a better fit. But I would love to be a part of, the, of your journey in getting to the place where you want to be and be able to do it in such a way that's fun without having to compromise on any level of success or ambition or drive that you may currently have. And so uh, that is it. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Go out, live, love, and have fun. And I will see you guys at the next live meetup, whenever that will be. I'll see you there. <laughs>